at these amazing birds. See their bright red heads and five foot wingspan. This is the Mississippi Sandhill Crane. Sadly, hunting and habitat loss has wiped out most of these beautiful birds. But even more amazing than the Mississippi Sandhill Crane itself is Jacob Valentine II, who stepped up and fought for these amazing birds. Jacob M. Valentine II, commonly known as Jake, was born on May 18, 1917 in Racine, Wisconsin, to Danish immigrant working class parents. He grew up during the Great Depression, which hit in 1929 when the stock market crashed. As well as the rest of the U.S., Racine was hit with poverty. Family members say that Jake and his family lived homeless for a time on an island off the coast of Racine in Lake Michigan. This experience might have helped spark his appreciation of and respect for wildlife since he had to survive in it. Jake had four siblings, Helen, Lloyd, Ben, and Esther. After the death of their mother on Christmas in 1933, one of his sisters became the mother figure and Jake began looking for ways to help support the family. An opportunity showed up in the Civilian Conservation Corps, or the CCC. President Franklin D. Roosevelt created this organization during the Great Depression to get young men a new job so they could earn money. In the CCC, strong men were sent all over the country, planting trees and making improvements to the environment. The men would go into forests and live in tents while doing their work. It suited Jake as he was strong. He was a Golden Gloves recipient in high school, independent and comfortable with nature. This would prove another important experience that influenced Jake's decision to spend much of his life outside. Jake joined the Army during World War II. He was part of the 32nd Division. At that time, many young men, including Jake, saw the Army as a way to get out of a small town and to see the world. In 1943, Jake and his unit were stationed in Ayatape, New Guinea, charged with setting up telecommunications on the island for U.S. troops. They were attacked by surprise by the Japanese. The only way to safety was to swim across the river they'd just been relaxing in. Most of the soldiers didn't know how to swim. In order to rescue injured soldiers on one side of the river, Jake and another soldier took turns swimming a rope across to the other side under close-range gunfire. Because of this selfless act, he was awarded the Silver Star, an honor awarded for gallantry in action while fighting, and is the third highest military decoration. Because of Jake's service to his country, after his discharge from the military, he took advantage of the GI Bill, a benefit that pays the college tuition of veterans. Jake returned to the Midwest and enrolled in biology and zoology classes at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 1946. Among his professors was noted an early environmentalist, Aldo Leopold. At the same time, interest in the ideas of preservation of natural resources and habitats was beginning to boom. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was growing as more efforts were made to protect the land and creatures that live on it. So after graduating with a master's in zoology in 1950, Jake began his career with them. He was assigned as manager to various wildlife refuges including Slade, Chincoteague, and Loxahatchee National Wildlife Refuges. Eventually, he became regional wildlife biologist for the Gulf Coast. It was during this role that the U.S. Department of Transportation was in the midst of constructing Interstate 10, a highway that would join the west coast of the U.S. with the east. The plan called for the road to go right through a savanna that was the habitat of the Mississippi Sandhill Cranes, an endangered subspecies of cranes that did not migrate as other cranes do. This bird stands five feet high and can weigh four to seven pounds. Their distinct bright red foreheads are their most easily recognizable feature. Though these birds mate for life, they only produce one or two eggs every four years. Usually, only one chick survives to adulthood. Jake quickly realized that if the highway were built without consideration for the natural environment, the remaining 35 Mississippi Sandhill Cranes would become extinct. Upon request of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Jake searched for a solution. He gave speeches, wrote articles, and testified about how badly the cranes needed protecting. This argument went to court in 1975 and is known as the Lanes vs. Cranes trial. The trial was the first test of the recently passed Endangered Species Act of 1973. 
Because of Jake's expert testimony, it was established that critical habitat for endangered species must be maintained. This meant that even though the road would go through his plan, 2,000 acres of nearby suitable land were acquired and designated a wildlife refuge for the cranes. This victory set the standard for protecting not only the land for the sake of the land, but also the survival for the wildlife that needed it. This testimony has become the most historic and controversial part of the Endangered Species Act because it affected public and private lands. Jake had saved the Mississippi Sandhill Crane from extinction, and the cranes were given a protected place to call home, the Mississippi Sandhill Crane Refuge. In the following years, Jake spent many years researching, studying, and speaking about the Mississippi Sandhill Crane. Even when Jake retired, he continued to help out at the refuge he helped establish. The refuge started with 30 cranes. They now have over 100. You can visit the Mississippi Sandhill Crane Refuge and see a monument made for Jake, whom they lovingly refer to as the father of the refuge. Sadly, in 2001, Jake died of leukemia. Jake Valentine II was an amazing man. He was tireless in standing up for the betterment of our world by protecting our environment and the creatures that live here. We can make a difference ourselves by remembering his example of considering nature first.